All right, everybody, we are back in. Uh, this is a reel and a beer. Got my man Peebs, my man Bradley here. We uh, we promised a video here a while back, and we're gonna, you know, come come uh, come through on that promise. That we promised to review Infinity Wars. Uh, we obviously know it's been out, you know, three months now. Been out on digital almost a month now. Um, well, the reason we waited to, to go ahead and do this video now is because we wanted to launch on Blu-ray so we can get some of those numbers on top of the box office numbers. Um, before we dive into it, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, this is one of the few movies all three of us agree on. Um, they did a phenomenal job of the movie. You know, anybody can critique any movie, but overall, I was pleased. I think you guys were pleased when we left the theater. Um, Bradley has a couple of interesting numbers that he's going to run by you guys that uh, even we didn't know. Now, it finished out, it's still, for some reason, three months later, they still haven't closed it out, even though it is on Blu-ray, it is on digital. Um, it played in a little over 100 theaters this past weekend and still made $50,000 in just 100 theaters for a movie that's been out for three months already. <laughs> its total, as of right now, is $2,045,986,438. Is that fourth place on time? Uh, all time? All time. I believe it's Avatar, uh, Titanic. Oh, I went to Justice for a place. I don't I believe Worldwide, it's... Avatar, Titanic, Force Awakens, mm -hmm. Infinity War, and then Jurassic World. That's the top five of all time. Avengers Jurassic coming in number six. <laughs> now, little go off here. Let's see. Top ten. I'm going to count these up. Star Wars, Force Awakens, Infinity War, Avengers, Age of Ultron, and Black Panther. What does half of that top ten have in common? Owned by Disney. They're all owned by the mouse. Yes. And now isn't Avatar also owned yeah. by the mouse? Technically. So the only things on there that aren't are Titanic, Jurassic World, and Furious 7 on the all-time top ten. And Cameron did both Titanic and... Uh, yeah. yeah, so... I mean, That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, as for the Blu-ray sales, this week the film had a terrific Blu-ray market, as it says, 76% of all Blu-ray sales were Infinity War. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Over three quarter of Blu-ray sales in this, this last week, it dominated. And it's been out on digital for a month. month. And do you think 76 of all, 76% of all sold? Now you're looking at something where as a ticket to a movie, average 10 to 15 bucks. This is something that is 25 to 30 dollars, not counting special editions, 4K UHD or anything Still like that. Books. Just oh. average, we'll say average 25 bucks a pop. That's, that's crazy. 76% of all Blu-ray sales. This week the film had, a, it says terrific Blu-ray market sales, 76%. Wow. <laughs> Dude, that's just like cartoonish considering yeah. that it's uh, it's already been out on digital that long. The next closest movie was Ready Player One with 66% of the market share. That's It did 10% more than, a move, than the next movie under it. 10% more movies than it did. Wow. That's, that's a big idea. gap because usually it's 2 to 3%. Yeah, 10% more is a lot. Yeah. Beeps. Let's start uh, diving into the movie. Well, uh, I'm just blown away by the sheer numbers that it's done. Um, to me, I mean, it was a massive undertaking that began, what, 12 years ago? 08? Oh, 08, oh, 17 oh, eight. years ago. Well, I was, you could say 12 years ago just based on when probably when they started the idea of... Oh, yeah, yeah. 06, 07, 08, somewhere in there when they started the idea of they wanted to build this universe. Well, I mean, massive undertaking. And yeah. we've had it building and building. And this was not the culmination, but it was, you know, part of the culmination of what we all wanted to see. We wanted to see Thanos come. We wanted to see what he finally could do. We've been teased with him. We've been, you know, little snippets here and there. And even people that aren't, you know, fans of the comics, they would have had to know by this point that, hey, this is not someone you want to mess with. And then we get him. And we get him as Josh Brolin. And Josh Brolin knocks that role out of the park. Yeah, he destroyed it. I, Absolutely. I well, can't say enough about that. I mean, I well, know how uh, Oscars like to snub movies like that, but in my mind, he deserves some kind of Oscar nom for that what, movie. What I like about it is the fact the first 10 minutes, um, who has theoretically, or not theoretically, but unanimously by most people since the first Thor movie been considered the single best villain in the MCU? 
Loki. And that first few minutes was kind of a send off from the the first big bad because he really was he was there a little bit here and there all throughout what four different movies yeah, up until was, now. It was the main villain in the first Avengers or kind of the main. All villain. three. He was in all three Thor movies. Yeah. So he's been there, and now this is the send off to the next big Avengers villain. I, I thought he was. I thought he was fantastic. Um, I, I liked him up until the Killmonger part. I, I, I thought Killmonger was the best villain to date, minus the house. But yeah, he, he absolutely destroyed. I mean, he destroyed it, bro. He made you like this. I mean, just little little things he did, like the, the little smile he gave in Avengers when he walked by and he knew Banner was on board. And he's like, it's just a matter of time. He knew he knew it's coming. You know. So, what I'm so that scene with him killing him off and he says no more resurrections. Yeah. It's almost like a send off to Loki and introducing the next step. Yeah, in the, the villains. villains. Yeah. yeah, but. Back to that, I mean, Brolin, you know, CGI'd up, you could still tell it was Brolin, which yeah. I give them a lot of credit for being able to do. Um, you could tell his facial expressions, because Brolin has very pronounced facial mm -hmm. expressions, and you could tell his facial expressions. You've got to love the character of Thanos in that movie. You've got to see his, like, plot. You've got to see that, you know, what he was doing stemmed from what had happened on his planet, and he was and his mind justified and at one point in time you're just kind of like is he doing the right thing is you know like, yeah, as a lot of good villains do yeah that make you wonder yeah like is is what Thanos doing for the greater good because i mean in his mind it is because it happened to his planet and then he goes back and he recounts all of these planets that he's done it to and how now they're thriving in population and you know thriving and growing everybody's belly's full that's yeah. what he said um, you get to see his emotional side with Gamora. You get to see their interactions. Um, you get to see him just stay cool, calm, and collected through most of the movie. Um, he he just he plays that role perfectly. I, oh, looking yeah. looking at it, I really I kind of questioned at first when they said Josh Brolin, and then. I, I'm not looking back. I'm not going to question their casting anymore. Right. He won me over just with that one line he said, you know, when he had Ron and, and Guardians of the Galaxy when Josh Brolin, the first time he played him, that whole when he threatens him about bathing the Starways in your blood, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, Brolin's going to pull the intimidation off. What he pulled off in this movie with the emotional scenes. Yeah, that was sick. This, all the stuff with Gamora from the time she's a little girl up until the time he had to kill her. It was just like, okay. He added so much more to depth. He genuinely looked that way. Like well, let's touch on that. I mean, who, when they showed up on that planet, who was expecting Red Skull to be there? Nobody. I was expecting, even though they kept saying death would not be involved in this, I was expecting it to actually be death, because that's his thing. I yeah. thought that would have been the one time if they were going to introduce you, it would have been perfect. I think they had that time to introduce death, and the time when he was walking up after he finished everything, and you see the <coughs> hooded figure, and you don't know who it is, and I was thinking it was death, and it turns out it's, you know, baby Gamora, mm -hmm. or little Gamora. Yeah. But I think they had the chance there kind of to introduce death, and I wish they kind of would, because it, you know, adds a little bit of depth to the Thanos character, um, but they, they really haven't needed it. And they went more sympathetic with they it, went, instead of yeah. surreal. So, as much as I would as, you know, comic book fan and lover of Thanos and, you know, since he loves death, you know, it would have made sense to put death in it, but, you know, they, I can see how they wanted to divulge from that. They haven't really brought in any of these cosmic entities into the MCU. The only real way they, to me, they dropped the ball with the whole death thing is the very first time we ever see Thanos, it's mentioned. When it says to challenge them is to court death, and he smiles, that was the only, and then they just completely burned away, but I was perfectly fine with it because they didn't really go into depth. They just kind of did that as a nod to the fans, like how much he loves, you know, he wants to die. He, so he can be with death, you know? He, to me, the one thing he did in this movie, he hit, on, like both of you guys say, he hit on an emotional level, he hit on an intimidation level, he hit on a strategic level, he hit on a patience level, he didn't get ahead of himself. It's like he literally, that dude had a job, like I said this before on here, the guy went punched his clock, let's go to work. He didn't care who he sacrificed, he didn't care what it took, 
And, and, and I can imagine some of the speeches he had behind the scenes with, with them and telling them, y'all ain't going to be here at the end. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be sacrifices in this battle, but we're going to win. Here's my thing, and to get a, to pull a little away from Thanos, because we could sit here and spend the whole 20 minutes, you know, talking about Thanos, is Benedict Cumberbatch, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, Scar Jo. You have this amazing lineup of a, of A-list actors, and everybody got just the right amount of time. Nobody outshined any others in that movie. Mm, I don't think so either. They didn't put anybody in the background. I thought that. Um Actually, I think this is Downey Jr.'s best acting job. And by personally, out of all his movies, I think this was the one where, uh, for the first time, the reason I say that, for the first time, he wasn't in control. He was reeling. He was... Are we, are we talking about all of his MCU movies? MCU movies. movies. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. All of his MCU movies. Because Tony Stark was not in control. Tony Stark was in a place he didn't know where he was. And he was he's about to do some stuff. He didn't know what was going on. He knew, like he said, it's a one way ticket. I could put it at the top of the MCU movies. You could feel it slightly more as much as I hate Iron Man three. His performance in Iron Man three is incredible. Like when he loses everything and he's stuck with that kid. Like that whole scene is the one standout scene in that. Yeah, movie. where he's just kind of breaking down, and you know. Yeah, that, that is a good standout scene. And, in Iron Man another thing in the movie that I thought was pretty impressive. And just about every other MC movie there is, they always dumb somebody down to bring somebody up. I didn't think that happened at all in this movie. They did with the villains. I'll, I'll say that they don't. They Ebony Maul has always been important, but they dumbed down Proxima Midnight and Corvus Glaive, and that really bothered me because those are the two badasses. The only the Black Order. The only one that I thought they dumbed down on, on, on I guess you'd say the Avengers side was I, I thought they definitely should have done a little bit more with uh, the Winter Soldier. I mean, they could have done a bit more with him. He's more of a, he's a bad, that, was, that battle was tailor-made for him. You're talking about tactical warfare out down the field where he's banging out people. That's yeah, made for him. Picking up rack and using yeah. them. Yeah, spinning that. Now, that was funny, but <laughs> I thought they could have done a little bit more with him. You know, because he's. Yeah, he, would, he had just come out, like, I think he had just come out of sleep and everything, so he was kind of still, he had only, well, I think White Panthers would be right after Civil War. So he's been out for about a year year and a half so he's still trying to just adjust to the fact that okay I'm living on the other side of the world I know there's people in this world still want to kill me so I've got to make peace with remember, myself remember what Black Panther said to him he said where's the war he said on its way yeah <laughs> you could tell he wasn't he hadn't been practicing you know like his war stuff he didn't even have the mechanical arm yeah, he was just out there for and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> he knew if Black Panther's giving him an arm he needs him to fight <laughs> yeah. yeah he said it's on his way um, but no, the movie, maybe moving on into the movie a little bit deeper. Um, I thought the storyline was good. Uh, a lot of Captain America fans were complaining he was Chris Evans wasn't in it enough, and I'm the biggest Captain America fan you'll ever meet. I thought they used him how you should because he's supposed to have been rogue and hiding, and then you know come out when when needed. Um, I thought they did. They used. They gave him justice. I don't think it should have been anybody's particular movie anyway. I as agree. far as the heroes with the Guardians and Avengers. Everybody should have gotten equal time. If you're going to have that many, bring that many people together, and then there's going to be some that might be your favorite yeah. that aren't going to get center stage this time around. You know, Thor is gone half the movie. You you see clips of him here and now, and he doesn't really have a huge presence again until the end, after he gets um, Stormbreaker and comes back down to Earth. Yeah, I think the movie itself, I think it focused on all the heroes and the right amount. And I mean, the movie itself was just kind of Avengers, Thanos, like it should yeah. be. I mean, it focused on Thanos the most. Other than that, I mean, we got to see a lot of, we got to see a decent amount of Thor. Um, we got to see not a, mu not, lo uh, not a lot of Captain. Not a lot of really anyone else, but it, it worked, it meshed. You got to see just enough of everybody that you weren't like, you know what I didn't, you know, I felt left out on this character. No, everyone did, everyone did so and had all, all that part. All that bothered me was I thought we did a little more than our soldier. Did you notice of all the people that asked, the majority of the ones that asked were the ones we got the most focus on though? From the members of the Guardians, to Rocket, to Black Panther, to Spider-Man, to Doctor Strange. Rocket didn't have. 
Oh, no, not Rocket, but um, Groot. Groot, that whole, like, the sad, probably the saddest scene in any MCU movie when you find out he says dad when he's being ashed off. But the ones that ashed off are the ones that you've got the most focus on. They were building, they wanted you to get attached to these characters. I know, because James Gunn actually came out and, like, here's the dialogue of what he said in this movie. And then when he was saying, I'm Groot at the end, he was saying dad to Rocket. It's just like, ugh. Oh, no, sir. And, 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 and I don't know which Russo brother it was had an interview the other day where he said uh, the reason that those characters dies is because they whoever everyone else's counterpart was they wanted to see them die in front of them that makes sense so Captain scene Winter Soldier uh, Groot or Rocket scene Groot and then Iron Man scene uh, Peter Peter yeah. Okoye watching watching Black, Black Panther, Panther die. they say they did that on purpose to make them, you know, revengeful, uh, avenge, let's avenge, you know, yeah. they did that on purpose. It's strategic, is what he's saying. I thought, it makes sense when you go back and watch it. You know what I mean? Tom, well, Tommy Stark also makes sense with Dr. Strange, considering he's the other extremely rich guy that can, you know, do whatever he Their first interaction in there. Oh my like, God. Fantastic, dude. It's some of the best comedy in the MCU. Dude, I mean, it's, it's, it's dry, sh you know, Let's call it this dickhead humor. It's two extremely rich douchebags just getting <laughs> into each other. Yeah, dude. He says, I've been controlling your reality, douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> what was that he says? Hitherto, hitherto no, never dreamt of or something? And he's like, did you just say hitherto not dreamed of? Or when he, or when he conjures up the, the tornado or whatever it was to that kick was the, the wind and dust back, he just turns around and looks at Tommy and just winks at him. And then start turns with that look on his face like, maybe you know, I can do it. So you know, I can do a little bit more than that. Mm. That, that, that little interaction, fan, dude, probably my best scenes in the movie. Well, you got probably two of the best actors on the planet going at it. Oh, like, yeah. Robert Downey Jr. and Benedict Cumberbatch trying to... They're right. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're... Yeah, you know, they're both. I mean, Cumberbatch, I mean, you're, you're talking to somebody that has been nominated for, you know, best actor nods two or three times already. Couldn't you see that dude just... Hasn't Robert Downey Jr. had a couple and stuff? Mm -hmm. Couldn't you see him being a James Bond easy? I, I don't know if he would be Bond. No. He don't... You don't think he could pull Honestly, that role? To me, even though know, Doctor Strange is, I love him as Doctor Strange. My favorite role is him as a villain, him playing Khan in Star Trek. Yeah. When they brought that, made nice. him a young version of Khan. Like, he's just so the intimidating and scary <laughs> in that movie. Yeah, no, I could see him pulling off a 007 easy. Look how clean cut he looks with a suit. No, oh, he'd kill everyone. I'm, I'm still for Idris yourself of being <laughs> James Bond. Mm. He's already British, so. I mean, I think after watching him do like Sherlock and all that, I would just, uh, I don't think he needs to play Bond. He's already I'm not talking about Downey Downey Jr. No. No, the oh. show Sherlock. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I thought you were talking about the Sherlock why, movie. That's why Tom Holland, <laughs> kept, Tom Holland kept trying to like get a no shit Sherlock joke in that oh, movie okay. when those two were together on Titan. And Benedict Cumberbatch and Robert Downey Jr. both kept slapping it down saying it's just too cheesy and too obvious of a joke. <laughs> it should have been done since they both played, uh, Sherlock at one point in time, that should have been done. It would have been, yeah. And Captain Marvel coming over, we're, side, we're going off a little side here. We have both, we're going to have both Watsons. Um, Benedict Cumberbatch's Watson is Everett Ross, um, Black Panther's handler with the CIA. And then Jude Law was Sherlock Holmes. That's true, yeah. Watson, and he's playing Marvel in the Captain Marvel movie. Dude, that, that's pretty cool, isn't it? It's all. What is that noise? Uh, um, anyways, guys, let's uh, we're gonna wrap it up. Is there final thoughts on the movie, Bradley? Final thoughts. I'm happy. I, I'm happy it took so long to do. Um, I'm happy they went with making it one movie and using the second movie as a, you know, come as a more less of a conclusion to this first movie and more as just something else entirely. Um, because remember, this movie was actually supposed to been spread out over two movies, and they compacted this one into a three-hour movie. Right. Um, am I hot for next May knowing that it's done? Yes, very hot. I don't think I would. I don't think I was as hot for the second movie, The Avengers Four, until after I watched this one for about a fourth time. Yeah. And that just made me like, oh god, yes, yes, please. I'm sick. I'm with you. sitting and waiting. Yeah, I agree. Beeps. They did a great job with the movie. I mean, could sit here and sing the praises of Brolin all day. I mean, perfect villain. Um, 
like he was saying, don't know how hyped I was for Avengers 4 after I figured out that, you know, they compacted this movie into one movie and, you know, then we're going to get Avengers 4. I was kind of like, man, you know, why? And then after watching it, you know, like he said, like the fourth time, you're just like, Avengers 4, Avengers 4, oh, yeah. Avengers 4. You're just chanting it. Captain Marvel, I'm up in the air if I'm excited about it. If it was just coming out as, you know, somewhere that was not really all that connected to Infinity War, I probably would have like a 2% excitement rating for that movie. But, you know, knowing that it's connected to Avengers 4, you know, the, it goes way up. Um, but overall, I, I give it an A+. Plus. A+. Plus. Um, my final thoughts on the movie... Um, one movie in Thanos is probably the second favorite villain of all time, and, I, and I'm not a Darth Vader guy. I respect Darth Vader. I like Darth Maul better than Vader in, in that in that universe. Um, but uh, I, I think he's the second best villain of all time. Uh, consensus. A lot of people think that way because this dude is an unbelievable actor who is playing an unbelievable villain and brings the two together perfectly. Um, had he not done his job, the rest of the movies dog shit. I'm sorry. It, it, he was the he was what the movie he was the foundation this movie's built on. Um, had he not been as badass as he was, you can forget the rest of the movie. I mean, you might as well just shut it down. Yeah, I'll, I'll put him behind. Which Vader is my own cinematic villain of all time. He's easily number two, and this is just after like a minute. five second cameo in Avengers, maybe ten minutes in the first Guardians, and then a whole movie dedicated yeah. to him. I mean, one true whole movie. I mean, and, and with that being said, I think. Chris Evans did his thing. Um, Downey Jr. did his thing. They all did their thing. They all showed up. They all showed out. Um, and it wasn't enough. I mean, that shows how powerful that guy is. You know what I'm saying? And like you said, and like you said, it leaves you wanting more, but it leaves you satisfied for the moment. You want to enjoy it. You want to go back. I, I've watched it 11 times, I think. I counted. Um, I think I'm somewhere up in there now, now that I own it. Like, I'm. You know, I'll be when I'm playing, playing the background or something while I'm doing something else. I'm gonna play the parts I want to see and skip through some of the you know ones that I didn't you know that you need to see but drug you know a little bit. And but like you said, wanting more is like an execution when they right before they execute somebody at all times. You hit that line in your head where it's like you have been judged and you have been found wanting. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> how it is. Yeah. The more you watch this, the more you want that fourth movie. You, you want it and. Um, well, with that being said, it's, it's definitely an A plus. It hits on all levels. Um, it's got comedy. It's got action. It's got heroes. It's got the villain of villains. It's got cinematic. It is a cinematic event of a lifetime. Like they said it would be. It yeah. was. It was. Um, the budget and all, it hit on all levels. Um, closing thoughts, I guess that's it. I, I'm an A plus with it too. Um, guys, we're going to close this one out. Um, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell beside it to get the notification for a real and a beer. This is a real and a beer signing off.